welcome to uh, episode 7 of the Herb Garden Network podcast and the very first episode of 2023. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I am the maker and designer behind Herb Garden Knitwear. I started knitting about um, 7 or 8 years ago and uh, in this podcast I usually show you my projects, what I'm working on, my new designs, um, which uh, patterns I'm currently working on and I also try to include a little bit of um, knitting help, knitting tips, some kind of um, helpful topics. There are previous episodes where I talked about um, swatching, about different uh, attributes of different fiber types and uh, other topics like that. So um, you might want to go back and check one of those episodes out. And uh, if you're a returning viewer, I'm very happy that you are back um, make yourself comfortable and uh, let's dive right in. So um, today I am wearing my vitamin C sweater which um, was inspired by the time between um, late summer and early fall when it starts to get a little bit colder so I have um, three quarter length sleeve but a beautiful wide neckline. I have these little um, uh, dot rows here which are mosaic knitting which uh, is very easy to work you only ever work with one color per row and um, I really love this uh, the sweater it has a beautiful I-cord neckline and uh, the pattern uh, is available on Ravelry so next up Lex uh, let me show you um, what I've been working on over the holidays and uh, what are my first finished objects of the year so maybe maybe we we'll start with the giant one over there. Um, it doesn't have a name yet. I am absolutely in love with it. It is a giant brioche cardigan that I knit from Plutolopi and uh, Fricola Natalia. So the yarn that I used is this one. So this is the Plutolopi. And I held it together with Philcola Natilia. This is the color 350. I'm not quite sure which color the which colorway the Plutolopi is, but they um, match really good. And um, yeah, I I made a cardigan. I started that one in June, I believe, in June last year. Um, and Although it is brioche, which always takes a little bit longer than stockinette stitch, it did not take me seven months to make it. I, there were many months in between where I didn't work on it at all, so don't be intimidated by this long time period. Um, I think if I would have worked on it um, monogamously, which I usually do with projects, but last year was a little bit off, um, then I would have been able to finish it in about two months, I guess. And um, that is only with uh, evening knitting, of course. I, um, I'm not able to knit um, all day, every day. Yeah, but I'm very, very happy with it. I was not able yet to take um, outdoor pictures. It's always very windy, very gloomy outside. We have lots of rain lately. Yeah, but um, maybe I can insert a picture or two um, of wearing it indoors so that you get a little impression. Um, it will take me some time to get uh, the pattern ready, but I think that is probably okay because it is such a warm garment and on this side uh, of, of Earth we are heading towards uh, spring, hopefully soon, so um, I won't be able to um, get the pattern ready within this cold season. It would be in the middle of summer, which is not very convenient. Even though I started knitting it in, in June, I would not um, recommend knitting a giant Pluto Lupi project in, in summer. So yeah, I will keep you updated on that. And as I am already talking about pattern writing, maybe I can give you an update about what I'm working on right now. So, if you have watched my festive diary episodes during December, you have already seen this uh, little 
cropped slip over that I made. This is uh, made um, from uh, Rauma Finnel. Do I have? Yeah, here. Here are some leftovers. This is the color 4126. And um, currently I am working uh, on the pattern for this one. I have written down the instructions um, for all the way up to where you slid, slip, um, where you split for front and back, and then I have written the whole instructions for the front side and how to work the front neckline. And now I'm currently um, writing down how to work the back neckline because it is a little more um, straight in comparison to the front neckline, which is a little lower. And um, so far, it is working out. And um, currently, I am aiming to publish this slipover in 18 sizes because um, this is a garment that is supposed to fit um, rather close to your body. Um, and that is why I want um, it to be able it, it to be um, available for as many people as possible. There's um, I, I don't think it would look good with um, much more ease than I am wearing it with. And that is because I want the the steps between the sizes to be uh, smaller than usual. So. Yeah, but I won't. I won't make any promises on these 18 sizes yet. Um, not as long as the pattern has been with my tag editor. But I will let you know um, when that happens and when I will be able to call for testers. I'm not sure if I will manage uh, to be uh, manage to call for testers within January. But um, yeah, I will keep you updated on that. I, I really am in love with this little slip over. Um, it took me years to fall in love with slip overs. I have seen, seen them uh, with so many people and I always thought, well, hmm, a sweater without sleeves, how is that like practical? If I don't want to wear it in summer but I also won't be able to wear it in winter because it hasn't, don't ha has sleeves. But now I see I was completely wrong. It is so versatile because it is perfect um, to wear underneath cardigans. So I usually wear it um, with a cardigan on top so that I'm extra warm in winter. And then it is easy to take the cardigan off for a minute if you have just been outside or roaming around and it is um, you don't get as hot easily as if you would be wearing several sweaters or a, or a cardigan over a sweater. So this is lovely because um, it is also easier to wear um, jackets on top because if you have a jacket with a very um, small sleeve, it is difficult to bend your arm if you have too many layers underneath. So I, I am totally <laughs> converted into a slipover lover now. I've been wearing this a lot. Maybe I can uh, insert another picture um, of me wearing it outside. Yeah, and I'm 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 very happy with it, and I hope you you will like it too. So, but I have um, not yet finished uh, to tell you all about my um, finished object. So usually I work the whole year on my own designs and on. Uh, the end of December I cast on a kind of a vacation knit uh, a pattern from somebody else that I can work during the holidays without having to think about it too much. And this year I chose to make the rosa cardigan from Alonga Vegana. And this is it. I am absolutely totally happy with it. This is so lovely. It fits like a glove. Um, it, I, I'm so sorry I could not take pictures yet because I would love to show you how, how wonderful it fits. So um, I'm not sure with which size I started out, but I ended up modifying it a little bit. I um, added one more uh, increase here. If you um, want to um, read the details, I have uh, made notes in my Reverie project, so you can go there and check it all out. I can link it below. 
and um, yeah, it it fits um, like a dream, really. And I found those lovely tiny red buttons in the same shade as as the yarn. And um, yeah, I made this from um, Holds Super Soft together with the silk mohair. So these um, raglan increases are very, very pretty, very easy to work. And um, this is for sure my one of my absolute favorite things that I've made. And it feels both very, very Christmassy. So I, I'm really looking forward to wear this for Christmas next year or this year, 2023. And um, I also feel that it's not too Christmassy to wear throughout the whole year. So it doesn't have any any pattern or or anything anything else that um, makes it a totally Christmassy garment. So yeah, I'm so happy with it. It's so beautiful. I hope to be able to take some pictures at some point soon so that you can see it worn um, because it's so it's so lovely. And it still smells of my wool wash. I haven't um, worn it other than to check the fit yet because I want it to be perfect when I take the first pictures. And um, I love, I just love that smell. So I think that was everything that I worked on. No, one more thing, which also kind of transitions into what I'm currently working on. Um, I am currently working on my third monument hat. So I have still some uh, unspun 2104 from Rain, Cloud and Sage here. If you have watched the past episodes you have already seen this um, several times. And I'm holding two strands with one strand of silk mohair and I'm working a third one. And this is uh, hat number three. It is supposed to look like this when it's done. This pattern also is available on Ravelry. And um, this is number three because uh, over the holidays um, I knit uh, another one in the same yarn that I used for the giant brioche cardigan over there. And um, that one is already uh, um, with a dear friend of mine I gifted it and now I'm making a third one because um, I still have, have enough yarn and um, we are um, currently hosting the Monument Hat Knit Along, me together with Ruth from Rain, Cloud and Sage. So if you want to make um, your own Monument Hat you can still join our Knit Along, it is still running till the end of January. And um, you can send me a message uh, on Instagram and I will add you to our chat group, which is absolutely lovely. We are having um, a lovely chat there and everybody is showing their yarns and their hats. And even though the um, knit along um, started on, I believe it was December 18th, um, there are still people joining in and there are still new um, finished hats uh, popping up and it is absolutely wonderful. So I am still totally in the spirit of this knit along and I am uh, finishing uh, Monument Hat number three. So that is what I'm currently working on. Yes, and I, I really don't usually make um, the typical knitting plans for a new year, like um, uh, for example, the Make Nine or something like that because I usually um, work on my own designs and even though I have plenty ideas always, um, I try to tackle them one at a time. And for, for this year I have also decided that I want to put a little less energy into designing than I have in, in the last years. I found that as I am not having an income from designing, I, I feel like the amount of work that I am currently putting into it or have put into it in the past three years is not really sustainable like that. I will, no, don't fear, I will not uh, stop designing completely. I really enjoy it, but um, 
it kind of takes away too much time. For example, the little slip over that I have shown you here. Um, and this is just a slip over, so I do not have to um, grade sleeves or something, but I am not yet ready with writing the pattern. That means that the work that um, it, it takes to have the pattern um, tech edited and tested, which is also a lot of work that is still coming, has not happened yet and I'm already... I, the amount of work that I've already put into this is like almost 20 hours. And um, with most of my patterns it is that the that even if I do not calculate the hours of work that I have put into the pattern, but just take the the cost that I had making that the pattern, like the yarn and the tech editing, then I do not sell the patterns often enough to um, cover those costs. So I actually pay to spend the work making the patterns and as long as it is like that I need to uh, reduce the hours I spend doing that a little bit because else I I spend my whole life just in front of a computer and I just don't feel like that's something I want to do. So I will keep on designing but I will um, make it um, take take a little bit less of time to do that. Another reason why is I, um, I can knit a lot faster than I can grade the pattern and write the pattern. And that means I have now about one, two, three, four, about four or five items that I have already knit and finished, but that I still need to write the pattern for. And that kind of amounts to something that feels like is always in front of me. There's always this huge amount of work that I still need to do and it kind of um, takes away my, my joy from knitting a little bit because I know as soon as I have finished knitting there is so much so much more work to follow and I tend to not wear or only very rarely wear my finished items until the pattern is published because I want it to stay perfect. I don't want to be uh, clumsy and and drip something on it and 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 I want it to be in perfect condition and then until it is published and that means that while you usually if you if you knit usually you would um, finish the item and that would be like the the peak of joy like you would have your finished item you would um, be wearing it happily and um, for me that is kind of not the case because as soon as I have finished the item I put it away and what then comes next is all the work of writing the pattern. So long story short what I was trying to say is I'm still going to design but I will try this year to um, pop in the occasional other knitting project um, that keeps me occupied knitting-wise so that I have always something on my needles to enjoy but that um, takes away a little bit of pressure to make just another pattern and another pattern. So I have two things in mind that I might cast on in the next few weeks or days. Number one is the Winter Speech Cardi from um, Andrea Murray and I'm not quite sure um, if I am happy with my yarn choice yet. I have considered using um, Drops Soft Tweed for it in the color, what's the color? Nine. It's a very dark charcoal gray. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up the color good. It has um, a little bit of tweed in it but it's very very subtle and I have made two swatches. Um, this one is uh, one that I worked in the recommended needle size, which is um, five millimeters, I, I think. And I felt like the fabric was a little bit loose, so I did another one on um, 4.5 millimeters. 
And um, I, I really love the color, but you already see it will be impossible to photograph it. Everything just gets lost with these dark colors. Yeah, but I, I do like the fabric um, of the four millimeter needles a little bit better. I have not yet measured if I can get gauge with this smaller needle. I believe I will not be able to get gauge. We will see. But um, I might just do some simple math and rewrite the pattern so that I can still use this this fabric. I'm still not sure if um, I want to use this yarn, even though with the smaller needle I really I really like the appearance. But I feel like in my head this is a very warm and dense um, cardigan, like 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 the name suggests, like you should be able to wear it in the winter on the beach where it might be a little bit windy. And I feel this fabric is, is very soft and very drapey, but I kind of, in my mind, I had something a um, little, little sturdier uh, for this cardigan. So I'm not sure. You can see it is very drapey. It's very lovely. So I might need to do another swatch um, for the cable pattern. And then I can maybe get a better idea if I like this combination of um, yarn and, and pattern. We will see. So um, maybe the knitting advice for this episode, um, because it uh, just fix, um, fits the situation very good, uh, would be the following. If you um, get gauge with the suggested needle, but prefer the fabric, um, with a different kind of needle. Then um, I often read that people just um, knit a different size than the one that would that they would actually choose because of the different gauge that they have. So in general, if people um, do not get gauge, sometimes they choose to just work a different size uh, in order to accommodate for that different gauge. So my advice would be not to do that because, well, it, it, of course it depends a little bit of the pattern, but if we um, talk about everything that has shaping in a way that the row to stitch ratio has, has something that makes sense, like for a hat, the crown decreases, for example, you have um, a certain amount of stitches at a certain point within the rows. Or if we look back at um, raglan shaping, so um, you usually have those increases uh, within a certain amount of rows. And if you just work um, a different size, you not only have a different width, which if it, if it would be only about the width, then knitting a different size would work perfectly. But you have like sections where you have uh, stitch to row ratio like within this raglan shaping and what will most likely be the result that this length that you need here will be very very different and if you let's say I had just knit this completely different without thinking about it then um, what could have happened if I have a different gauge uh, one of the following things if I I mean, if I have a different gauge and just knit a different size in um, to accommodate for the, the bust circumference that I need. I might get the right bust circumference, but um, I maybe have this section way too long or way too short, depending on your gauge. So you usually should really think about that. I would never recommend just um, knitting a different size without doing math. So I, if, I, if I have the situation that I do not get gauge or want to work a pattern at a different gauge, I just go in there and pop in my gauge and then recalculate what I need to do. Or I simply choose a different yarn so that I can get gauge. And this is exactly what I have as options in this winter speech cardio situation. I either will use 
the smaller needle and recalculate the pattern or I will go um, and use a different yarn. So we shall see. This is one of the projects that I have in mind um, for the next few weeks. And there's one more. Um, let me fetch the yarn. So um, this is the yarn. It is mystery yarn. I hope the, the packaging doesn't make too much sound, so I will put it up very quickly. So, here's one unwrapped ball. This is um, mystery yarn. <laughs> I um, went to um, the Woll, Woll Festival Düsseldorf, which is a yarn festival in, in Germany, and um, this yarn was on sale there, and that is because it doesn't have a brand on, on it anymore. So it just has um, the fiber content and um, the uh, meters per gram. So it is supposed to be 100% wool, and it has, uh, for each of these little balls, it's um, 20 grams and 84 meters. But other than that, I have no idea what this is. And um, as uh, I showed you, I have three colors, like this natural creamy shade. This is a very dark brown. It's, it's somewhere between brown and, and black, I would say. And then I have this rusty color which appears a little brighter on camera than it actually is. But within, with these um, three colors I thought I would try and swatch for the, I believe it's called the Lune Shawl, shawl by um, Natasha Hornby. And this is the other project that I have in mind to cast on um, in the upcoming days. And I still have to decide whether it is going to be the shawl or the Winter's Beach cardigan. And um, yeah, those are my, my upcoming projects, hopefully. And uh, design-wise, I will see what I am going to start next. I have some ideas in my mind, but I usually um, wait a little bit before I am going to share them because um, I had, uh, I've made the experience very often that I have an idea in my mind that sounds really great and as soon as I try it with different yarns, the yarn does not work and it always takes some time for me to experiment with the idea and um, I, will, I will show you as soon as I have uh, something that I can really confidently show you that I think that will actually work out. Yeah, and uh, until then I will cast on some some other patterns and um, I will work on the cardigan and on the slip over and maybe also on, on some um, designs that I finished last year but I haven't yet written any pattern for them. So yeah, that are my plans for the upcoming weeks. At the end of each episode I usually try to highlight another knitter, podcaster or designer and this week I would like to introduce you to Ira. She's a lovely knitter and she has a beautiful Instagram and she also um, has a YouTube channel and if you want to check her out I recommend watching her knitting plans for 2023 that she recently shared in a video. She is always fun to watch and uh, I really enjoy her content and her knitting projects so maybe you will too. Thank you if you have made it all the way to the end. I know the informational segment in this episode has been rather short. I hope it still made sense. Um, feel free to drop any questions in the comments and I would also love to hear um, if there are any other topics you would like me to address in future episodes. Um, that is always very interesting for me. If you um, do have a YouTube account, I kindly ask that you like um, this video or even consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out immensely. Growing um, my reach here on YouTube and both on Instagram is what I um, really need in order to be able to um, make designing sustainable for me. So please consider sharing this video with your friends if you have enjoyed it and um, Give it a thumbs up, that would really make me happy, thank you. 
yeah, I hope to see you soon. I would love to hear about your netting plans. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.